OldTimeRadioDVD.com has the largest, best collection of vintage and nostalgic media on the internet. Large collections of old-time radio shows, classic TV, movies, cartoons, and serials. Check them out today, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the Gazette, you are missing out on the only digital magazine of its kind to be found anywhere, and it's free. Go to OldTimeRadioDVD.com, check out the collections, and subscribe to the Gazette. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. How did you do that? We're, we're not in the church anymore. We're somewhere else now. Where, where, where are we? What do you see? Oh, I, I see a Midwestern farmland, a, a bright blue sky, wheat fields, a half-finished barn, a tractor, even a pen full of farm animals. This looks like Kansas, but... But that's not possible. Not after the explosion. Uh, this can't be. Hey, boy, stop that. You'll spook the cattle. This can't be Kansas. There is no need to lower your voice. We cannot be seen or heard. Not even by him. That farmer, he, he looks familiar to me. But, th but there's something not quite right. Uh, the beard, maybe. And uh, the hair's too gray. Still, I feel like I've seen him before. You have? My God, he's pounding those nails into the barn with his bare hands. Though he is not of this world. Hup! He, he's lifting that tractor up with one hand. He came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. You know him by a name he has not used in ten years. Superman. Not since he began his self-imposed exile. I remember. He left Metropolis. Something happened. There was a mass murder at the Daily Planet. A madman named the Joker filled the place with gas, killing everyone. And then the metahuman called Magog killed the Joker. And there was a trial. Your memory serves. Whatever happened drove Superman here, but my God, he, he's so alone. Not always. Hello, Clark. I mean, hello, Kal-El. Hello, Diana. Haven't seen you in months. That woman, her star-spangled costume, is that... Diana, a princess among the Amazons. In man's world, she is known as... Wonder Woman. She's beautiful. But I read about her when I was so much younger... Even Superman has aged a little, but she looks the same as ever. Time passes in different ways for different beings, Norman McKay. And though they do not age, immortals feel the weight of years as heavily as do men. What brings you to the farm? The vain hope that you're not still here. But where is here? This can't be Kansas. Kansas is gone. Attend. You're needed, Clark. Don't call me that. I mean, Cal. You're needed back in the world. Kansas is gone. Kansas? Gone. It was Magog. That's no longer my concern. You can't live forever in solitude. I'm Superman. I can do anything. Except, apparently, face your fear. I'm not afraid of him. I didn't mean him. I meant... Cal, you've lost so much since I first met you. Earthlings die, you know that. They were your parents, Clark. Cal. And she was your wife. Don't call them Earthlings. Hear me out. I have I... work to do, Diana. Here things grow. Oh, really? What, what's happening to the sky? It is a hologram. Well, then, this whole place is an illusion? But no, no, the animals are real, and the wheat field. Spectre, where are we? On the continent of Antarctica, inside Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Fortress of... Well, there were always rumors that Superman had a hiding place, but, but this... Well, this is unbelievable. Not any less believable than what you have seen. Far more believable than what you will see, Norman McKay. Attend. Stop it, Diana. You're spooking the animals. Computer, reactivate holographic image. At least I provoked a reaction in something. Listen to me, damn it. 
I've come with news from the outside. Bad news. It's shaken the world. Cal, Magog's out of control. I tried to tell him that ten years ago. And the people of Metropolis didn't listen, I know. Stop punishing them. I'm not interested. <clears throat> Door open. You've locked yourself away in this lonely place for ten years. Look what it's done to you. Do you live in nothing but lies? I told you. Here are two words. See if they sound familiar. Truth and justice. You can't have completely forgotten them. Just see for yourself. See what he has let happen to the world. That's all I ask. <sighs> Monitor room door open. He, he's walking right over the edge of that pit. Watch out! He cannot hear you, Norman McKay. And he has no need of fear. Well, he's standing in midair. Oh, of course. I forgot. View screens on. The BBC has the whole battle captured on film. The fight began in the American city of St. Louis, where the metahuman known as Magog and his Justice Battalion descended upon the weathered creature known as the Parasite. The Parasite, once known as Maxwell Jensen, had the metahuman ability to absorb the powers of others. No one knows how the Parasite attracted the attention of the Justice Battalion. But all witnesses agreed that before long, all of Magog's forces arrived on the scene. Captain Atom, who could loose the nuclear energy of his own body. Judo Master, who was lethal at using her opponent's weight and inertia to her own advantage. Thunderbolt, a superhuman athlete and martial artist. Peacemaker, the misnamed weapons smith. Nightshade, the otherworldly maniac who can summon a liquid darkness to the brightest of days, and Alloy, the giant biomechanical organism made of pure metal. And leading the battalion was Magog himself, his golden armor and horned helmet glowing in the sun. The battle crossed state lines and raged to the wheat fields of Kansas. Witnesses characterized the parasite as fearful and willing to surrender. Leave me alone! Please! Leave me alone! Witnesses claim his pleas for mercy were ignored, and already people are speculating that the tragedy might have been averted had Magog relented. Onlookers were staggered, but not surprised by the savagery of the Justice Battalion's attack. Magog, one of the new breed of heroes, is best known as the one responsible for Superman's farewell to Metropolis. He can clearly be seen on camera ordering his team to ignore the Parasite's surrender. At this point, we will turn the commentary over to the on-site cameraman who captured the battle on film. These are the last words he ever spoke. The Parasite's taking a beating and he's panicked! My God, why don't they leave him alone? Well, here comes Captain Adam. He's firing an energy blast. He touched the Parasite! Captain Adam got too close to touch the parasite. He gained the Adam's powers. Oh, now he's firing back. Oh, oh my God! He split Captain Adam open. He split him open! At that point, the signal was cut off. Early reports indicate immediate casualties numbering close to a million as the dying Adam's radioactive energy swept hundreds of kilometers, rendering the entire state of Kansas, as well as parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri, an irradiated wasteland. The total loss of America's breadbasket, the sterilization of its agrarian culture, has thrown the world economy into near collapse. Off. Do you see now? Do you see why we need you? Cal, please. Our generation takes its lead from you. We always have. You must face this. If you don't, neither will the rest of us. And it just goes on. Cal? Door open. There's nothing I can do from here. Go back to your island, Diana. You're safe there. Cal, please, you... She's gone, flown off. 
And now, what's happening to us? Are we flying too? No, but we are moving. Or rather, space and time move around us. She said, neither will the rest of us. Who did she mean? Those who, a decade previous, felt the crush of Superman's greatest and most necessary failing. His inability to perceive himself as the inspiration he is. The shock of seeing Superman suddenly abandon his never-ending battle took an immeasurable toll on his contemporaries, his peers. Some, their spirits stripped, chose Superman's path and retired. Others, unable to turn their backs completely on the world they know, continue to use their special abilities to champion order, though in some most clandestine ways. I know this place. I've been here before. This is Keystone City. In the time of Superman's absence, Keystone City has become a utopia, a protectorate relentlessly patrolled by a gale force once human. No one sees him, no one hears him. He runs a lonely race, but all who live here have felt his presence. He is everywhere at once, a guardian angel who rights even the most harmless of wrongs with lightning speed. He lives between the ticks of a second. He is the Flash. Where are we now? The Pacific Northwest. Where another of yesterday's guardians has claimed the forests as his area. Some call him a savior, others an environmental terrorist. He is feared unjustly by those who would deprive the beasts and birds of their sanctuary. His name is Hawkman. And now we're... we're in space. I won't be able to breathe. You have no need of breath, Norman McKay. You are now a creature of spirit. We are here to see the place where another former hero takes his refuge. I see a space station. It's enormous and glowing with a strange green light. He calls this place New Oa. High above the Earth's surface, his self-made emerald city twinkles in the night sky like a verdant star. There, Green Lantern commands a lonely throne. Ever vigilant, ever waiting for signs of threats extraterrestrial. The gods of yesteryear no longer walk among the humans, Norman McKay. They have left humanity to its own fate. But what of those who weren't gods? I remember another who made his home in Gotham City. What has become of the Batman? Ah, Batman. Batman has his city under control. Where are we now? Oh, wait, this bridge. I recognize the tram that runs alongside it and this river. You brought us to the Outerboro Bridge in Metropolis. I'm home. This startles you? It just seems so mundane. You've taken me to Antarctica and into space and now we're back here? I have taken you where destiny demands. Now we are done. What? We are done. But but that's all? That's what you have to show me? That disturbs you? Yes, you're an angel. That makes you a messenger of hope. At no time did I promise you hope. A greater power sent you. Your, your very existence is a testimony to faith. You mean that all you have to tell me is that those who could save us won't? 
Oh lord, what is it now? The beginning. More metahumans. Another rumble, right here on Otterboro Bridge. Look at them. They're animals. Hey, Mr. Terrific! I heard you was back in town. That's right, 666. And I got friends with you. I want you to meet my lady friend. Calls herself the Joker's daughter. And my sizable second here is the battle robot, Annihilate. Targeting sequence activated. I can open that tin can up with my Swiss Army knife. Besides, I brought backup too. Right, Manitar? Backup. You and your pals made a mistake standing on top of that tram, Mr. T. These cables could snap in any minute. That is, with a little help from us. Open fire! Lord, all those people in the tram are in the line of fire. The, the metahumans are worse than before. They're not acting out of boredom. They're acting with abandon. Poor Kansas, they at least had some grasp of responsibility. Now they don't even have that. Nothing matters. They're following Magog's reckless lead. They're out of control. Almost got the cable. Got it. Don't you understand if any of us are to survive? Any of us! Now more than ever, we need hope. And suddenly, there was a wind. No, not a wind. A blur of motion. Hey! Someone just blew by me! Bending the steel of their weapons. and changing the course of the mighty river below, swirling water up in a giant funnel to stop the fall of the tram car and set it gently on the bridge with all the passengers still inside. And even before the bystanders had freed themselves from the tram, they knew, we all did, he had come back. He had not abandoned us. He stood in the sky like a symbol of faith rewarded, the man of steel, the man of tomorrow, the last son of Krypton. For a brief moment, I am ecstatic. Look. But then it returns to me, the vision that haunted Wesley Dodds. Up in the sky. I see the vision. The man trapped behind a wall of flame, screaming in agony. It's a bird. It's him. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Dear God, the threat of Armageddon hasn't ended. It's just begun. 